Hello, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Welcome back to my channel, The Encouraging Word. Today I have a special treat for you. Let's see if you can figure out the theme. Got all my little fall decorations out because we are in October and we're getting into the season. And let's see if you can think and guess what, what my topic will be about. Any clues? Today, you guys, we're going to be in Philippians. We're going to be in Philippians, and I love the book of Philippians. We just did it in a women's Bible study group that I had, a small little group that I went to, and it was wonderful. And so in praying with the Lord, I was just like, God, oh, wow, this word is so powerful, and I just want to share what I learned with you. So yes, our theme today is going to be thankfulness. And what a better season is it to be thankful that we're approaching that time of year where we can reflect on our lives and how we need to have thankfulness towards God. So today we're going to be in Philippians. So go ahead and get your Bibles if you want to follow along with me. This is a Christian standard Bible that I'm going to be reading out of. And um, I do want to give you a chance to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you have not yet, I do verse-by-verse -verse Bible studies, topical Bible studies. Um, I do uh, Christian book reviews, Bible book reviews. I do different playlists that you can check out. I have over 200 videos. So if you want to know God, you want to understand Christianity, you want someone to hold your hand through reading scripture and understanding it, I, by all means, am not a all know it all, but I've been a Christian for 12 years, so I have learned quite a lot, and we can grow together. So I'm never done even in my faith growing with the Lord. So I want to invite you to subscribe and hit the like button so that tells the YouTube algorithm that you like, like my content, and it will show it more to people so they can find it. Well, let's get started for today. So we're going to be starting... Here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, and as you can see that it says practical counsel, which if you don't know by now, the word of God is so practical. It is full of wisdom, you guys, just common sense things to apply to your life and, you know, a lot of God's word is very prescriptive where we can take it and digest it and apply it to our lives. So I wanted to go over this with you because the book of Philippians is only four chapters. It's a great, um, I believe it's a great book to just even read with your kids and, and um, it's pretty quick. And in fact, I'm going to be going through this with a Bible app, listening to it on the way. Um, I have two boys. I have a 16-year-old uh high schooler, and then I have a 10-year-old uh, fifth grader. And so on the way, we're going to start next week on Monday, just listening to a chapter of day in Philippians. So that'll be real quick because it's only four. So this is just really good for practical counsel. So let's get started. So verse four, it says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So the first thing I want to point out here is if you read a little bit, you know, a few verses earlier, you're going to see that, you know, Paul is writing and there must be something going on with these two women. These two women, he's asking them to agree in the Lord. He's he's saying like, hey, these women, they, they've contended for the gospel by my side, but there's something going on where they are maybe in a disagreement. And Paul is always telling us that we need to unify. The body of Christ needs to come together and unify. And he's saying that, 
you know, in the middle of trials. Now, you know, a background to this book is that he's writing it while he's in jail. And so he is going through some trials and tribulations of his own. And in the middle of that, he's writing to the, the church in Philippi and you know, he's giving them some counsel here and he's hearing some things between these two ladies and, and he's asking for them to to agree in the Lord and to come together and remember that they are contending for the Lord and that, you know, they've already done that and he wants them to continue that. And then it goes into rejoicing in the Lord always. And then he says it again, rejoice. And so to me, that's just I feel like the Lord is saying to us here that in the middle of contentions, in the middle of disagreements, even between brothers and sisters, in the middle of trials and heartaches, and in the middle of, you know, your proverbial jail, you know, in the middle of all that, God wants us to rejoice. And He wants us to rejoice in Him always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And Paul says it again, and I say it again, rejoice! Exclamation point. Because with God, even though you're going through a hard time, and maybe you're going through loneliness, maybe you're going through a season of rejection, maybe you're going through a hardship, maybe you're really praying and asking for God to provide for you, and it's just very hard for you to trust in God right now, maybe there is, like these women, uh, there's some contention and there's some there's some kind of disunity going on. Maybe it's between your family members or or things happening in your church and just different things happening. But even in the middle of that, we're supposed to remember that we serve Jesus Christ. We're supposed to take up our cross daily, right? We're supposed to die to ourselves and we're supposed to decrease so that who? Jesus, so that Jesus can increase in our lives. And that when we just put our faith and trust, no matter what we're going in, um, through, I'm sorry, no matter what we're going through and what we are experiencing in our season of life, whatever that looks like, if we're not to take our eyes off the prize, I feel like Paul, like the Lord is using Paul to say here, hey, remember what I did already. <laughs> remember already what I did and I want you to rejoice because when you recall all that God has done, and how he saved you and how he's brought you out of darkness into life and that the old you is gone and buried with Christ and and there's a new you and you've been born again and you are a child of the most high God now that you can rejoice no matter what you're going through. So I, I just feel like that's what God is telling us here, that God is speaking to us, that we need to always remember what he's done and that we need to rejoice no matter what our circumstance is. And he says, let, in verse 5, let your graciousness, okay, so we're supposed to be gracious to one another, right? Not just to ourselves, but to, you know, God is gracious. God extends his grace and his mercy to us. What is grace? It's God's favor. It's, it's his unmerited favor. In other words, you came into the kingdom of God because God gave you grace to know him and the Holy Spirit was working on your heart and tenderizing it. And grace, you cannot earn. You can't earn your salvation, in other words. And so God is like the most gracious of all of us. And if we are born again in him and, and we get his attributes, we have the Holy Spirit working in our lives. We have the fruit of the Holy Spirit, like Galatians says, that we should let our graciousness be known to everybody. So like God extends grace and mercy towards you, I feel like God is telling us here through Paul, hey, you do the same, that in which God gave you, you be gracious to others, you know? And in fact, let you, you should be known for your graciousness. You should rejoice in me, says God, you know, say it again, rejoice and let your graciousness be known to everybody. So everyone should know you to be a gracious Christian. The Lord is near. You know, so just remember that no matter what you're going through, no matter what kind of trial and tribulation, no matter what conflicts that you have in your life, that you should be, <clears throat> you know, and it's not to condemn you because there's no condemnation in Christ. But if you've been 
acting out in an unchristlike manner, if you have not been extending grace and mercy to those, if you've not been extending forgiveness to those who need your forgiveness, <clears throat> then, you know, maybe God is speaking to you saying, you know, hey, I want you to exhibit these fruits. I want you to exhibit and give away. I want you to be known for your graciousness because that's what I'm known for. That's what God is known for. He's known for his graciousness and mercy to everybody. And it means that he's near to you. He's living inside of you and he's near to you. And then in verse six, I love this part. It says, and this this is so helpful for those of you who have anxiety and stress and you know panic attacks and things like that. This is just so beautiful. And and we're to take this like medicine, you guys. Scripture is medicine to us in a weary world and 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 a place where there's darkness. There's so much darkness in our world right now and within our culture and everything that we're constantly bombarded with and even our children, like they need to know, like we need to know these things and then we need to teach it to our children if you have children. So in verse six, I love it. It says, don't worry about anything. How hard is that, you guys? I don't know. I've struggled with that. I've really, really, really struggled with with that. I'm kind of known to be a worry wart. In fact, everyone has said that to me <laughs> in the past. And, you know, it's not good for us to be worry warts because it's taking away. It's like we're putting, it's like we're trusting fear over having faith in God and his goodness and his grace and his mercy and the fact that he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And that, yes, he may allow us to go through some suffering because we're learning and, you know, we're growing in that. He's spiritually growing us, but he doesn't abandon us in it. And he's holding our hand and sometimes carrying us through that. But, you know, I love how it says here, don't worry about anything, but in everything, all those things you're worrying about through prayer. Okay. It, it seems like there's a prescription here he's giving to us, in my opinion. So don't worry about anything, number one which is hard, but instead of worrying about all those things, this is what you're supposed to do, but in everything. So with everything that you're struggling with through prayer, so first thing you do is whatever you're worrying about, whatever you're stressed out about, whatever you're um, seeking the Lord for, and you're just wanting breakthrough, you're wanting some kind of deliverance through something, or you want to change, or you're struggling and you're having trouble with sin, um, or you need you just need some kind of breakthrough in your life or in your family, or you're just really crying out to God, but what good is it doing you to just worry about it constantly? It's not doing you anything. In fact, it's letting the enemy work on you. And here's the prescription is through is don't worry about it. And through everything, what do you do? Through prayer and petition. So you're petitioning God through prayer and petition, but you're doing it with a thanksgiving. You're doing it, you're praying to God, you're giving him your cares because you know the word of God says, cast all your cares and anxieties upon the Lord because he cares for you. So when we're doing that, we're actively giving Jesus, like we're giving him our box of worries and we're doing that and we're we're praying and we're believing God. I believe, you know, I, I'm worried about this, God. I'm worried about that. I, I just need to give it to you. And then I'm at the same time, please, God, petitioning God, please, God, please make this a breakthrough in my in my life. But I feel like before you even get there, it's saying Thanksgiving, you guys. It's saying Thanksgiving. And what that means to me, like how I apply this in my life is I try to always worship God before I, like I try to make a conscious decision to when I start a prayer or a petition or whatever you, you know, just speaking to God and I might have 10 things that I am so worried about that day. But what I try to do and I, what I feel like the Holy Spirit has told me is like, just worship me, Michelle. Just like worship me, put some worship music on, just get your heart right. Get your heart right 
Bill, help me to stir up your faith. Like, I feel like the Holy Spirit is like, hey, I'm going to do my part, but you also have to do your part. Like, stir up your faith in me, stir up your faith in the Lord, press into God, and, and then start praising Jesus. Start praising the Father. Just thank God. Like, God, I'm... You're so powerful. You're so mighty. You're so amazing, God. There is nothing greater and more powerful and more mighty than you, God. You you are so majestic, God. You are so powerful. You are so mighty. And you just start, you know, praising him and giving him glory. And then, like, move into, like, it's just getting your heart in a position to where you can start, I believe, letting those worries go and you can start praying and being like, God, I'm worried about this, God. I'm worried about my children. I'm worried about my health, God. I'm worried about that test result. I'm worried about my schoolwork. I'm worried about how I'm going to pay my bills. I'm worried about my marriage. You know, whatever that looks like for you, what your worries are. And and it's like, but your heart is more open to receive from the Lord because you've been praising God. You've been worshiping. You've been getting into his presence. And, you know, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Like he loves it when you're praising him and worshiping him and lavishing your love on him. And I feel like that's what that, you know, is positionally getting your heart right before the Lord, before you're going into like praying about your worries and, and petitioning him, basically begging him sometimes, please God, show up right here, do a miracle, Lord, do a healing, do, do something, God, I need your help. And, and you're just, you're just praying about these things and position, uh, petitioning him, but you're doing it with thanksgiving. You're not doing it with a wrong heart of griping at him and complaining at him, I mean, God knows all our feelings. He knows everything. He knows what we're thinking, you know. Um, he knows where we're at. And he's very gracious and he's very merciful. And so if you happen to pray a prayer that is griping, I, you know, we're not supposed to stay there in my opinion, but I've, I've, I've done that before and God is gracious to us. But I feel like Paul is saying here, like, we need to give our worries and our our, our our doubts and our concerns over to God. But first, let's get our heart right. Like, let's do it with thanksgiving for who he is, what he's, he's already done. And we're thanking him already for stuff he's done. And so then we're reminding ourselves already, already what God has carried us through. And it's building up and stirring up our faith, you know, and it's it's helping the anxiety to go away. It's helping the depression, the rejection, all of that, those things that the enemy wants to come still kill and destroy. But Jesus has come and he's come to give us more abundant life. And sometimes that abundant life um, can be sped up by you not agreeing with the enemy and you following this formula that God is saying by doing things with a thankful heart and and that will open up open up your heart to reminiscing on the things that God has already done and how he's already moved in your life if that makes sense. So don't worry about anything but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving so that part is really important not with griping not with not with, you know, condemning God or griping at him or being angry with him. Um, not with a critical spirit, right? Towards God. But with thanksgiving, then, okay, present your request to God. And what will happen? What will happen when you're doing it with thanksgiving, your prayers and your petition and giving your worry and doubt to him? It says in verse 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding... And I think some translation says all human understanding. And I really like that because, you know, our minds, there's only so much we can understand as humans, like our human minds. And so the peace of God, like in the middle of a storm, y'all, in the middle of the trial, in the middle of a tri tribulation, in the middle of a cancer scare, in the middle of uh, war, in the middle of rumors, in the middle of whatever that looks like for you. It doesn't matter because when you're doing all this, like no matter what you're going through, it says here that God is going to give you his peace in the middle of all that. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, all 
your human mind can't even fathom when you experience the peace of God because it's like contrary to what everything in the world is telling you and what you and your human mind can even fathom. It's like, how can I have peace right now when I'm going through all of this? But God, he does that. He's supernatural. God is spirit. And so he's able to supernaturally fill you with not peace. You know, Jesus says, I come to give you peace, but not as the world gives. But it's it's a supernatural God peace that, that only comes from God. You can only get it from God. And it surpasses all human understanding. And what does this peace do? It guards your heart, your spiritual heart. It guards your spiritual heart and your mind, your mind, your thoughts, how, you know, it's guarding all of that from the bombardment of the lies of the enemy. You know, he's coming at you with those fiery trials. He's coming at you with that word bombardment and thought process bombardment of just warfare thoughts, you know, with those fiery uh, arrows that the enemy sends. But God, it's like he gives you, he guards your heart with peace in the middle of it all. And he guards your mind, the the way that you're thinking. And we're going to see here where I highlighted in the further down what we're supposed to be. Like, how is this peace that God is going to give us going to transform our minds? Literally, the word of God and his spirit transforms our minds. And it helps to guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And, you know, the beginning of all this process is, is not to... What? Not to worry about anything, but and everything. Follow this in prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request known to God, and then God's peace will come upon you, and it'll guard your heart and mind and minds in Christ Jesus. And then Paul goes on to say, down here in verse 8, finally, brothers and sisters. Okay, this has to do with your mind, you guys. This has to do with training your mind, okay. Whatever is true, he's talking to brothers and sisters. He's not talking to the world here. He's talking to you. If you are a, a, a daughter or son of the most high God, this is the Lord speaking to you. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Dwell, okay? It is When you're dwelling on something, it's like you're really processing it. You're really thinking about it. You're really meditating on God and meditating on his word and meditating on the things that are pure and holy and righteous, Hey, his word is pure and holy and righteous. So you can take even the scripture here, you know, a verse or two of it, and you can memorize it and you can meditate on it because it's pure and it's holy and it's righteous and it's lovely and it's commendable. God's word will never lead you astray. And so what that's going to do is retrain your brain, retrain your thought process. It's going to be easier for you to spot the thoughts that are not of you. They're not your thoughts and they're not God's thoughts, but what they are, they're thoughts from the enemy and the enemy trying to bombard your mind with all these lies and to confuse you because he's the author of confusion. God is not. And trying to get you go down the wrong path, trying to pour out all this attacks of anxiety and stress and panic and depression and suicidal thoughts and all of that, loneliness, lies, telling you stuff. Like I remember I used to feel like that. I, I used to hear things like that from the enemy that you're ugly. You're not wanted. Nobody loves you. Your husband doesn't really know you. He doesn't really love you. Or you're not wanted there. You're not going to fit in. You're not going to you know, no one's, no one's going to understand you. No one is really your friend. Like every time someone would be nice to me, the enemy would come and be like, they're being fake. They don't really like you. They didn't really, they don't really mean what they're telling you. And it's just like a vicious cycle, you guys. And so that's how the enemy wants to keep you in this trap of thinking that way about yourself and thinking that everyone's out to get you and nobody truly likes you or who you are. Um, 
And those attacks come before you're born again, but they come also when you're after you're born again, of course. So, you know, if you read God's word and meditate on it and learn it and apply it, and you're going to, you're going to be thinking about things that are pure and holy and lovely and righteous and commendable. It's going to help you retrain your brain and help you to spot the enemy's thought versus your just pizza thought, you know, like how like pizza dreams and whatever. Um, and you can, you can spot out those things, you know, a lot quicker and, you know, you don't dwell on the lies of the enemy. What you do is you dwell on the things of the Lord. Do what you have learned. Verse nine, do what you have learned and received and heard from me and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. So here he's saying, do what I'm doing. <laughs> like I'm sitting here teaching you God's word, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, an apostle of God. And a few times in Philippians, Paul is telling us to do what he's what he does. Learn what he does, read the word of God, study how he lived his life, study how he spread the gospel, study how um he teaches us what is honorable, what are good things and what what's an abomination to the Lord? What are the good behaviors that God wants us to ex, you know, uh to have? And what are what are the bad behaviors? What is the truth of God and what is the lies from the enemy. And so we're to imitate Christ and we're to imitate people who are solid in Christ like Paul. So there he says that another time or two in the, you know, in this book, actually. So then I want to go down here and I want to address some of this in blue. Verse 11 says that I don't say this out of need because so this little section here is he's showing appreciation for the support of the people in Philippi because, you know, they want, they love him. They wanted to support him. And so he's like addressing that here. And he says in verse 11, I don't say this out of need for I have learned, and this is so important. Okay. For I have learned to be content. I'm stretching it out. Sorry. For I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. I know both how to make do with little and I know how to make do with a lot. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or need. I am able to do all things through him, that's Jesus, who strengthens me. Still, you did well by partnering with me in my hardship. So I just wanted to point this section out here because um, this is about us learning that no matter what we're going through and what our circumstances and what our situation is or how we feel, because our feelings and emotions change every day. So we're not to live our lives by our feelings. And a lot of people do that. And you can see the product of that in their life. It's just all over the place and crazy uh, and very depressing and full of fear and anxiety. But what he's saying here is that he's learned, okay? Like with the help of the Lord, he has learned that um, to be content with whatever circumstance that he's finding himself in. So yes, he's going to have circumstances or moments where he's life is seemingly pretty good and pretty stable and pretty pretty well. And um, hey, he's not hungry. <laughs> you know, he's not in jail. He's in the middle of other brothers and sisters fellowshipping. You know, having peace in his life and heart and whatever. Um, he's not finding himself in a hardship, let's say. And then he's going to have other circumstances where life is different and. He's hungry and he's not well fed and he's in, and he's in need. He's in need. And, um, so what he's saying is like, no matter what circumstance you're finding yourself in, learn how to be thankful, um, unto God, learn how that, Hey, you know what? Don't, 
necessarily always pray it away. I mean, you can if you want to pray. I mean, obviously pray for help and pray for God to help you in the middle of that. But also be aware that sometimes God will let you go through these kind of circumstances because he wants to teach you and he wants to grow you spiritually. And he also wants to use you in other people's lives. And if you don't go through anything in life, you're not going to be able to help others when they're going through a circumstance like similar circumstance one day. But if you go through a hardship and you make it through with the Lord and you trusted in him and he brought you through it, then you are of use to the Lord in that person's life. And, and you can share the gospel with people and you can know where they're coming from and relate to them and they can relate to you. So whatever circumstances, circumstances you're finding yourself in, Paul is telling us whether you have a lot or a little, or you're hungry or you have whatever, whatever that looks like, you need to learn how to be content. Uh, and I think that's tied into that peace of God, knowing that, Hey, you know what? Everything I have, everything I go through, everything that, that is quote unquote mine, it's not really mine. It's God's. And it's what God is allowing me to have in my life. If I have an abundance in my life right now, it's because God is allowing me to have abundance. And it's always to give and share and to prosper others, not just myself. If I'm having a hardship and I'm suffering and I'm going and I have a lack of, I'm still going to trust God. I'm still going to find contentment in that. And I'm going to learn. I'm going to go through this process. And then also God is going to have someone else that has an abundance uh, be able to pour into me and use their gifts in me and be able to help me out. And that's also training that person. God is God is teaching that other person's uh, how to be more Christ-like and giving, if that makes sense. So we, no matter what circumstance we're going in, we're supposed to learn how to be content in it and... Um, and where it says, I can do all things through him, Christ, who strengthens me, that is not meaning that you can just get whatever you want. That's really popular in the whole uh, prosperity gospel and all of that. Like, oh, whatever you want, Christ is going to strengthen me to do it. You know, no, our hearts are deceitfully wicked and we can want some pretty wicked things and we can be after the wrong things sometimes in life. What this is talking about is that, hey, no matter what I'm going through, no matter all the trials and tribulations and no matter whether I have a little or a lot like in it, I'm I'm supposed to be content and satisfied with the Lord, that the Lord is my satisfaction and that no matter what I'm going through, he will strengthen me to get through it. Okay, I can do all of these things. I can go through hard times. I can go through good times. I can go through times of little and times of abundance. I can do it all because why? Not because of myself and my own strength, but because of God, because God strengthened me and because he's with me and he never leaves me or forsakes me. I hope that makes sense. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed that and that you got something out of it and you like my little Thanksgiving figurines. I'm just going to pray out this video real quick. Father, I just worship you, God. I praise you, Lord. We just are so thankful, God, that you saved us and that you revealed your truths to us when we were so far away from you, God. You just intervened in our lives and you made a way you made it happen god and we're so thankful we want to recognize who you are you are powerful and mighty and majestic you are god you are the god that created all the heavens and the earth and you there was nothing that was formed that you weren't part of that jesus because you've existed always you were not created you've you're the all eternal god and everything that was formed including me including anyone watching was formed through you god and so I just want to thank you, Lord, that you're so powerful and you're so mighty and your word speaks truth, God, and that is able to change those hearts that hear it. And I pray that anyone that's watching this right now that is going through a season where they're not feeling thankful, maybe they're full of fear and anxiety and panic, maybe they're full of depression, maybe they're full of loneliness, maybe they're full of just demonic attacks and maybe getting into this fall season towards you know christmas and things like that lord it's, it can be a difficult season for people may they lost loved ones and, and this is a season where the enemy really pounds on them hard lord so i just pray 
I know you're a God of breakthrough. I know that you're a God of deliverance. I know that you're a God that is powerful and mighty, more powerful than any wicked spirit, more powerful than any um, lies that the enemy can tell us, God. So I just pray that you would pour out your spirit on all my brothers and sisters, Lord, your children, that you would renew their minds in you, Christ Jesus, that they would learn to apply Philippians chapter four, that they'll apply your word and they'll take it as truth. They'll take it like medication, that they'll learn to not worry about these things, that we're supposed to cast all of our fears and anxieties upon you, God, because you care for us. And that through everything, through prayer, and petition that we do these things with thanksgiving a thankful heart God and we present these things unto you God and that you will replace our anxiety as we give it to you as we worship you we are praising you we're telling you what we're grateful for we're remembering all the things you've done for us in the past God how you carried us through before you didn't leave us then you're not going to leave us now you're going to carry us through it God and that we can trust you because you're not a man that lies. You are God, you are spirit, and we can trust you, God, and that you will replace our fear and our anxiety and our stress and just our confusion. You'll take all of those things out of our hearts and minds, God, and you'll replace it with supernatural peace of God, supernatural Jesus peace, and you'll you'll infuse us that, God. You'll, you'll, you'll take it away and you'll put your perfect peace that surpasses all our human understanding. We can't even fathom it, but we say thank you, God. Thank you for your peace. Thank you that you give peace at the world. The world is so chaotic, God. I don't know how they do it without you. I don't know how I ever did it without you, God. I'm so thankful, Lord, that we can live in peace, perfect peace, and we can rest in the fact that you love us, that you saved us, and you're merciful and you're gracious, God, and you extend that to all people that, that are wanting that, Father. And so I just, I thank you, God, that we can apply all this to us, God, and you, you guard us. And, and that you retrain our brains to think about things that are honorable, God, and pure and holy and righteous and lovely, things that are commendable, God, anything that has moral excellence. Your word is moral excellence, God. You are moral excellence. We would not even know how to have morals if, if it wasn't for you, God, because you are perfect love. You are perfect love, God. And so let us know and understand your your morals and apply it to our lives. And, and let us think about those things that are commendable and excellent and praiseworthy. And let us dwell. Let us dwell in all of those things, God. Let us meditate on them. Not empty our mind, but let us fill up our mind with your word, your scripture, your truths, how you see us, God. And your praise and worship unto you, God. Let us just do that in our minds and in our spirits, even as we go about our day. And um, and, and thank you, God, for your peace. And, and thank you, God, that through any circumstance we're going through, you will help us through it. You'll help us through it because it is not our strength, but by our weaknesses, you make us strong, God. And therefore, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can learn to be content in anything. And we can learn to trust you and give you our fears and anxieties because, because you're with us and you partner with us, God. And you strengthen us. And we're strengthened by you, God, not by anything of our own own strength or will. Um, so I just lift up all my brothers and sisters in the Lord to you, God. And I pray that you that you met them in that prayer. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope that it blessed you. Bye-bye for today.